Ladies and gentlemen, there are three major reasons why sitting on a fence or trying to time the real estate market may in fact cost you more money instead of saving you some money on your purchase right here in St. George. We're going to talk about that in this video, so be sure to watch it until the very end. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Nick Rostopchin, and this is my wife and business partner, Michonne Rostopchin. We help people relocate to Southern Utah, and we absolutely love hearing from you guys. We love receiving your phone calls, text messages, and emails. So even if you're remotely thinking, or maybe it's in the near future or far future, give us a call, shoot us a text, email us. So without further ado, let's dive into this video. I brought on Michonne for her incredible looks and great ability to write on this blackboard. Number one, the market is not going to crash. We hear from so many people just anticipating the market crash. And there are several reasons why the market is not going to crash. While I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of what the Fed is going to do, which way the interest rates are going to head, and trying to forecast, when we sign a new listing, trying to forecast the market right now has become more complicated than ever because things are happening so rapidly. But we have several substantial market indicators that tell us that the market is not going to crash. Number one is inventory, supply and demand. Anybody that currently owns a property at two and a half or three percent has no real reason to put that property on the market. And we're continually seeing a slight decrease in our inventory. Yes, it's taking longer to sell the like properties. Week by week. Week by week, yeah. yeah. So the, the number of active listings is actually decreasing, even though things aren't going under contract as fast as they we're, used to. We're not getting as many new listings hitting the market every month either. Because if you if you currently own a home at two and a half or three percent, why would you sell? Because your equity in that property, yeah, you, maybe you've experienced some appreciation over the last few years. Sell. And how many people are experiencing those extreme needs where you absolutely have an external factor that's forcing you like to Like family sell. or work or something like that, so. So the inventory is limited. That leads us into point number two. Is new starts are down by 70%. So we've pulled these numbers from our partners in title. And I'm able to present you guys with these numbers. Reach out to me if you'd like to see the exact numbers. In 2022, here in Washington County, we pulled over $1 billion of new start permits, meaning that there was over $1 billion this worth year? of evaluation in 2022, okay. last year. So like there was so much new construction happening. It was booming. Real estate developers were building spec houses that were selling prior to them even being finished. And everything, the sellers were very much in charge of the market and well, a, lot a lot of, of them a lot of built new builds they've just been sitting on their inventory so well they just not not in 2022 in 2022 yeah. the sellers and the developers were super optimistic so they were pulling 50 to 60 permits that wasn't unheard of and everything was just selling super fast now a lot of these developers have been around the block since prior to 2008 and what we're we're seeing in 2008 since everybody's talking about the 08 crash and that's a common comparison i, I will use these numbers to compare it against that so Part of the reason why we got in trouble in 2008 was predatory lending. The other part is the optimism on the seller side. There were so many developers that even though they saw these red flags, they continued to overbuild. And then they were sitting on that inventory, there was oversupply and a real estate market or any market for that matter is supply versus demand. If there's too much supply, demand goes down and the prices follow. If there is a lack of supply, then typically demand goes up and the prices follow. I, like personally me, I wouldn't want to wait until the rates drop, the demand goes up, the prices go up because we don't have a lot of inventory. So yeah, as the well, inventory the, goes down, the prices are the going supply, to go up. The supply aspect of it, as I mentioned, a lot of these real estate developers, they're building out these subdivisions. They have been through the 2008 crash. So right now, when we compare the numbers from 2022 to 2023, our new starts are less than a third. So. The new starts overall across the entire nation are down by more than 70%, meaning that the inventory trickles into the market. And if you're thinking about building a new home right now, uh, the days of having to build a spec house are gone. You could build a custom house. And a lot of these developers are just building to suit. So in other words, they're not oversupplying the market. So reason number two is we're not, we're not going to see this crazy pivot because all of a sudden we have this insane supply of inventory and the amount of people that are living all of the parts of our beautiful nation that are becoming just too insane or too crazy to live in. And the demand is still really, really strong. We have tons and tons of people moving to Southern Utah because it is such a beautiful place. 
you guys would like to learn my story, my experience about me moving here, I'll uh, link a video up here. Michon is a lifelong Southern Utah resident and we wouldn't go anywhere else. And keep in mind, even though prices are still high, rates are high, there are still some really killer deals to be found and homes are going for what, under 4%? Right now, our list to close ratio is about 94%, meaning that real estate deals right here in Washington County happen at about five to 6% below asking price. And that keeps, that's gone up since last month. Yeah. So there's some deals to be had. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't wanna wait until you'd have to get into multiple offer situations and overbid or get into any of that. I mean, I mean, none of that's really happening right now. And to Michonne's point, um, a lot of people are waiting. So people are waiting for two things right now. Number one is they're waiting for the market to crash, right? As we've already established in our previous two points, that most it's, likely just isn't going to happen. And in 2020, so was that same thing. We had the inventory went so low that people were going 50, right. 100 grand over. The other thing that people are waiting for is uh, for the interest rates to drop. So there's talks about the Fed pivoting their decision on quantitative tightening and going into quantitative easement because we went from a robust economy with less than 2% inflation rate to, I don't know what the true inflation rate is, but it's not, not anywhere near where we want it to be. And every time Jerome Paul addresses the media, he states that his views on inflation are changing and now is becoming less transient, but more acceptable. So who knows? There's a good chance that they will have to re-stimulate the economy. And to Michonne's example from 2020, surely you could qualify for a loan with a much higher purchasing power at 2.5% or 3%. However, many other people did. And our supply was even more limited than it is right now. So there is a reason to believe that if that were to happen, let's say we saw 3% rates, the demand would go up because more people are able to qualify for a larger purchase amount. And then when demand goes up, in 2020, majority of the contracts that we wrote, we would preface with a question, how much cash do you have available to offer over asking and over appraisal? Mm -hmm. So there's a good chance that if we go back into the territory of low interest rates, that would be a challenge that most buyers would have to face. Like right now you can typically get sellers to cover your closing costs and or a buy down rate. There's there's just a lot of opportunity. Right you really now. have a lot of tools in your arsenal as a buyer. And the biggest and number one tool you need to utilize as a buyer is a licensed real estate agent in your corner. Using a buyer's agent doesn't cost you a penny, but now you're hiring an expert that knows the area, that knows how this market works, that knows exactly what you should offer. And you can lean on that person because they literally have the fiduciary duty to do expressively what's best for you, pursuing your best interests from the beginning of that relationship and all the way until the very end. And you're looking at two. So if, if you're thinking about moving into this area, please reach out to us. And that leads us to point number three. Look at the trends. Look at the trends. So the reason we brought up this point, uh, we absolutely love when we receive your comments, by the way. And most recently, one of our videos that's been receiving a ton of views started receiving some skeptical comments. Like somebody said, taking advice from realtors, yeah, no thanks. And no matter how snarky these comments get, we absolutely love and appreciate them because it gives us an opportunity to prove this content and improve our videos so that you guys enjoy them more. By the way, before we dive into this point, if you could give, do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up if you found it useful and share it with a friend if you think they may benefit from it as well. But let's talk about the trends the trends that we saw in our market, and we've kind of discussed some of them with Michonne a little bit earlier, referring back to 2020. If we look at the average sales price right here in Washington County, and when I refer to Washington County, that's pretty much the entire corner of Southern Utah, St. George, Utah, and all of the surrounding communities. We have a ton of videos coming up to tell you guys a little bit more about specific communities and neighborhoods that might be best for you. So when we look at these trends, uh, if we look at April of 2020, average sales price was just 392,000. April of 21, when the pandemic happened and the global relocation of people happened, people were able to start working remotely, 
a lot of markets across the nation began to boom. And Southern Utah was in the top, I think in the top five of the fastest growing communities. So in April of 21, our average sales price was 521,000. April of 22, it continued. Our average sales price was 668,000. April of 23, right now as we stand, is at 573,000. So this is all the data that we have at our fingertips and we're, we're happy to share it with you as well if you'd like to look at these numbers a little bit closer. But when you look at these trends, there is a lot more to these numbers than what meets the eye. Like in an example that we mentioned earlier, uh, when we talk about demand versus interest rates, mm -hmm. typically as the buying ability improves, the competition increases because more people are able to qualify and more people are competing for the same pro property. Well, and I would say majority of our clients right now are sitting on the fence waiting. Everybody, yeah, everybody's well, everybody, waiting right yeah. now. Just a majority of people that reach out to us say, hey, we're about you know, a year out or two years out, or maybe we're ready right now, but we're just not sure which way the market is gonna go. If you find yourself in that position, there's an infamous saying that I absolutely love. Don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and then wait. I think there's many ways to interpret that saying, and I always look at real estate as an asset class that's going to pay out long-term. So whether it's your primary residence or maybe you're purchasing an investment property or you're just trying to park some cash in a hard tangible asset that's not going to drop with the currency or take on more water in in the recessive state of our economy anytime you look at that play don't look at it as a one to two year play if, if you're thinking about owning something for maybe one or two years in in transitional markets you're better off just renting if you're looking at it as a more of a five to 10 year plan, if you plan on owing that house for five to 10 years, we could look back five to 10 years and our market is only going up. And that's in most states. Mm -hmm. Now, number one rule of real estate is location. We believe that Southern Utah is absolutely an incredible place to live. So we feel that you cannot make any mistake by moving into this area. The only mistake that you could potentially make is moving into a wrong neighborhood and Michonne and I know this area backwards and sideways. We have so many clients that have moved here from all over the place. So reach out to us, give us a call. Just let us know about a few things you absolutely love and things you cannot stand. And based on that, we could put you in a perfect neighborhood, but the ball's in your court. The first step is to give us a call, get in contact. We'd absolutely love to hear from you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Please give this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you don't miss any more of our future videos. And if you are thinking about relocating to Southern Utah, please reach out to us. We'd absolutely love to hear from you. And there's a couple more videos up here that the YouTube algorithm will suggest specifically for you that may benefit you. Until later, we'll see you in the next one.